When we're writing code for our Unity games, we sometimes notice that we're duplicating code for very similar but unrelated scripts. This can be a sign that you should be using interfaces. In this video, I'll show you what an interface is, how to use them, and the benefits to using interfaces in your Unity projects. Let's get started. The project we're working with is a simple first person shooter where we can shoot different objects. Looking at the code for each, we have an enemy target with health that decreases every time it's shot, a destructible cover object that will break when it's shot, and an explosive barrel that will explode when it's shot. We also have a first person controller. Now there's a lot going on here, but the main concern is in the shoot method. We fire out a raycast from the center of the screen, and if it hits an enemy target, we call hit. If it hits a destructible cover, we call break. And if it hits an explosive barrel, we call explode. This part might seem a bit odd. There's a different method call for each object that we shoot. If we want to add more objects in the game that we can shoot, then we have to add more logic to the class for each object that we add. The underlying problem here is that we have common behavior across unrelated classes. Each object has something similar when the player shoots it, but we'll call a different method for each one. This is where we can make use of interfaces. Interfaces are often referred to as contracts because they enforce a class to expose certain properties and methods. Here's another way you can look at this. An interface lets you know what a class can do without having to know how it does it. The first step is to find the common behavior between these classes. We have three methods, hit, break, and explode. A more generic method could be shoot, but this behavior could also be common to other actions like throwing a grenade or performing a melee attack. So let's go with a more generic name, damage. So what does an interface look like? Here's an example for the interface that will allow the class to take damage called I damageable. Some common conventions for naming interfaces are to add the letter I at the start and to add able at the end, but these are both optional. It's very similar to declaring a class, except for a few differences. We use the keyword interface instead of class. We don't specify access modifiers on our methods or properties, since by default it should be public. Finally, our methods don't have a body, just a semicolon. This is because the interface is defined what the class can do, not how it will do it. That's up to the class that will implement the interface. Speaking of which, let's implement this interface in our three damageable object classes. Starting with enemy target, we add a colon next to the class name, followed by the interface name I damageable. Now, add the damage method we define in the interface, and inside it, we'll just call hit. If you don't do this, you'll get a compilation error. Remember, an interface is a contract. If you don't implement the methods defined in the interface, then you're breaking that contract. And that's all there is to it. So let's quickly repeat that for the destructible cover and the explosive barrel classes. The next step is to change our first person controller. In the shoot method, find the code where we are getting the corresponding components. Since all our classes now implement I damageable, we can move all these lines and just call get component I damageable, and it'll find the component that implements that interface. Now, the first person controller doesn't know the specifics about all the objects it can shoot. Instead, we're saying if I hit something I can damage, then damage it. I don't care what the object is, and I don't care what happens when I damage it. I let the other class worry about that. This helps to break the dependencies between these scripts, which means we can change one without breaking the others. But you might ask, can't I just use a base class? And you can, but remember, you can only inherit from one base class in C-sharp. The benefit to using interfaces here is you can implement multiple interfaces on one class. In the example on screen, we now have a grenade that we can throw, and it'll explode after a few seconds, but if we shoot it, it'll explode straight away. The grenade class implements two interfaces, iThrowable and iDamageable, two completely unrelated concepts. A base class wouldn't work here because not everything you can throw can be damaged and not everything you can damage can be thrown. This is because a base class defines what a class is, whereas an interface defines what a class does. When you design your classes in your scripts, try to look at them in terms of their behaviors and abilities rather than what they can be described as. You don't care if it's an enemy or a barrel, you care if you can shoot it. You don't care if it's a sword or a potion, you care if you can store it. When you start to look at the objects in your game like this, you'll find it much easier to identify these smaller modular interfaces. And when you do, interfaces like this will help you break dependencies between scripts, let you add new mechanics faster, and keep your code clean. Let me know in the comments if you're using interfaces in your game projects. And as always, if you found this helpful, check out the other videos on screen, leave a like, and subscribe for more.